Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. It has happened, or at least it's being reported that it happened. The first F-16s are now officially reported to be in Ukraine and operational. And I want us all to celebrate this. Know that this is first but very, very important step for Ukraine. Ukraine needs all of the weapons it can get. Ukraine needs all of the capabilities it can get. And Ukraine needs the planes most of all. Because right now, one of the biggest problems that Ukraine is facing is Russian planes. And F-16s, besides the fact that it's a multi-purpose uh, aircraft, one of the major things that it is able to do and is capable of doing is additionally helping to protect the skies against the Russian aviation. So the first deliveries of F-16s are going to be relatively small, and I want us to position very, very well. For Ukraine to be able to effectively challenge Russia in the sky, it will need like tens of uh, F-16s, maybe even dozens of them. So until we get into couple of dozens of F-16s, while we should celebrate it, we should not expect significant changes. And I want us all to be very, very strongly positioned on this. The F-16s are not going to be efficient by themselves. They need weaponry. And US has already declared that they will be providing weapons to F-16s. From this note, I want to underscore that the weapons that are listed here for F-16s are nothing groundbreaking. Nothing here has really shocked me or will provide significant... Well, I mean, it, it will provide an advantage just because it's going to be the same um, armaments but located on an airframe and for they are going to be able to use uh, full capabilities of for example AGM-88 Harm. So AGM-88 Harm is an anti-radiation missile uh, for example against the radars but currently the way that Ukraine is using it on uh, existing planes in Ukraine they are pre-arming it on the ground, they're putting it on the old Soviet planes, Ukraine flies into the sky and then launches the missile in hopes that missile will find the radiation um, source of some radars and then hit the radar. They actually cannot go back to the base with these missiles armed, so they need to fire them off uh, every time they are in the sky which is obviously non-ideal. They cannot utilize the full potential of the missile. So F-16 will allow to use, use these missiles to their full extent because uh, it's a native connection in between them, with a native interface between them. The only missiles I believe that I've seen certain uh, analysts mentioning of uh, what, what they can uh, really provide, I don't see them listed here. It was uh, one of the missiles uh, with uh, with 120 in the name. If you find the news somewhere else, maybe you can uh, be more precise on that. Uh, and one of the experts mentioned that, that these weapons that with 120 in the name, they have different variations. And if it is a D modification, then that D modification actually provides an extensive range for Ukraine that will allow them to actually target the uh, Russian aviation bomb launchers, which is going to be definitely uh, a big, big welcome gift. Uh, I will maybe put it in text somewhere. What, uh, what is the name of the missile that I'm talking about? But actually a month ago, I mentioned that there's going to be some big news because the full disclosure about a month ago, there was first appeared rumors from relatively trusted sources that some of the first F-16s made it to Ukraine. Now, it was uh, not confirmed because there was no videos, there was no photos, and there was no independent verification. That's why I was hoping that if the news made it to me as a... As a as a rumor, then maybe F-16s are finally in Ukraine. But as it turns out, it probably was just first kind of flights. Maybe it was first uh, initial parts of the infrastructure being delivered and so on. So preparation for deliveries of F-16s were ongoing for already a month. There has been also later a video appeared of uh, supposedly F-16 flying over Ukraine. This has appeared, I believe, like a week ago or so, maybe just a bit more. And uh, this video, unfortunately, because it was uh, 
undetectable, unidentifiable where, exa where exactly it was filmed. That why that's why it was not clear whether or not F-16s were actually in Ukraine. So now there is a, already Bloomberg reporting on this. So it's definitely great news. Uh, and again, I just want to caution everyone not to get too excited because Ukraine needs that mass. They need to accumulate that uh, weapons mass to start uh, delivering the pain to Russians that the F-16 can actually do. And more importantly, Ukrainians are working very hard to protect the F-16s. We know that Ukrainians have prepared both the military infrastructure, the underground shelters for F-16s, but also Ukrainian um, decoy producers are active at work at producing airplane decoys, including the F-16 decoys. Potentially, one of the F-16s that was reported to me at the start of the month was maybe a decoy um, and so on. So that's good to, things to know that Ukrainians are taking precautions. And I'm pretty sure that soon we're going to see from Russians uh, videos as they are destroying the F-16s of Ukraine. We should be wary for that. But talking about the destruction of Air Force, uh, recently Russians reported that the Mi-8 helicopter has been destroyed over the uh, the occupied territories. And the, the curious part of this is, is not that it was the Mi-8, it actually has been destroyed before, but the reports from the Russians are that Ukrainians have been using FPV drones to specifically target and hunt for helicopters in that area. And that what happened was actually a success by the Ukrainian FPV drone. Obviously, we have no proof of that, but I can tell you for sure. Here is, for example, an additional video that, uh, and, and there has been multiple videos of this. A couple of, uh, a month or so ago, I told you that you would be seeing one of the most important videos of this war, where Ukrainians were using FPV drones to intercept Russian loitering munition, Russian drones. And at that moment, I was telling you that if it is indeed the case, and Ukrainians are making developments in um, anti-air technology being the these cheap FPV guided munitions, that it's going to be a huge revolution in the anti-air warfare and it's going to increase Ukrainian anti-air capabilities significantly. So uh, we have now many, many, many videos like this one where Ukrainians are striking some of these loitering munition or scouting drones. If also the confirmation about helicopter striking them with drones is true, then we can say for sure that Ukrainians are developing this area and it's great and i was again absolutely right uh, saying uh, that ukrainians uh, are going to be hunting for all of the russian aviation targets specifically helicopters so if soon we're going to see helicopters with the cope cages i would not be surprised so please stay tuned for all of these uh, coming out soon to the theater near you uh, on my last video, some uh, idiot and dumbass uh, decided to write a comment from a parallel universe that was stating, is like, Georgie, you're talking about Russia su suiciding themselves in these assaults, and uh, but you don't show any video. Therefore, it means that it doesn't happen, that Russians do not sacrifice themselves in the assaults. And the answer to that is very clear. YouTube guidelines. I cannot show you the videos because of the YouTube guidelines. But you can join the Discord where we have specific uh, video from War Channel where you can follow along and you can see all these hundreds and thousands of videos of Russians being annihilated. So to that dumbass that said that comment, hello from the parallel universe, I guess, where Russians are not sacrificing themselves in their assaults. One of the major videos was recently is that's the uh, to the comment that was uh, made last time when it was stated that Russians are attacking huge man waves with like little to no support. And then the video appeared of Russians just uh, walking down in column and then being completely annihilated by cluster munitions and FPV drones. And it was all the recorded video. So everything is in our Discord. Join that and it's going to be uh, very much uh, clear to you what I'm talking about and that uh, the proof is right over there. And another, I always talk about that Russians are overusing and overextending their forces. 
And uh, people have been critiquing this channel that I mostly talk my opinion, but I don't deliver a lot of sources. And, and I'm going to start slowly incorporating, sharing some of the sources with you already today. You've seen some of the Telegram channels that you can just uh, pause and op copy the link, or not the link, but write the link and join those Telegram channels. You can also subscribe to Dmitry at War Translated because he is reading all of the sources in Russian or Ukrainian and he's delivering you the uh, translations for that. For example, here, here we have from the Voyankor Katenok where he describes that you know, the situation is kind of bad, that uh, it's very, very bad what's happening right now in, uh, in Ukraine, and that the forces that we're having is pretty, pretty de getting depleted really, really fast. Uh, a lot of the confusion is about 200, 300. So in Russian coding for, um, for what status of the man, uh, 200 means a dead person, 300 means an injured person uh, and then 500 is a is a AWOL is a person that run away or don't want to um, obey the orders so it's it's a weird thing but that's just how it is so if someone says oh this guy is 200 that means that this guy is dead and this has been a lot of confusion a lot of the uh, western uh expert from the media that had no idea about this they were looking at these numbers and they were like saying oh my god russia has like 200 and then 300 troops that means that they have 500 troops on this area which no they not that they're just stating that they are having both injured and dead so just a, a nice piece of trivia and he's not the only one the one, one Korkationak, because dmitry also explains that other channels such as the fighter bomber one of the major news source for what's the state of the russian aviation he is reporting that the staff from the airfields and the aviation is now being packed up and sent to the front line russia is pulling a lot of these resources they're trying to make sure that they have all of the resources pulled to throw them to the front lines including the injured soldiers i've talked about this it's been going on non-stop. So when I'm talking about certain things happening, it's not just imagination. This has been uh, reports from everywhere, but from now on, I'm going to try to show you where we can also follow these sources and verify, and we're going to talk more. Additionally, I want to explain this chart. So in Russia, they are trying to get new conscripts into the military by incentivizing them because Putin doesn't want to do another wave of mobilization. So instead, uh, he is um, they, they introduced um, a requirement system for different uh, regions to provide a certain number of quote unquote volunteers to participate in the army. Now, the, the goal of this challenge is not to be last. Essentially, if you provide your quota of volun volunteers to the front line, you're doing great and you don't get penalized and uh, uh, you get your budget. If you do not do that, then you're going to be on the chopping block and essentially you're going to uh, fall into disfavor. And this created a disparity, this discrepancy, where more rich regions such as Moscow, St. Petersburg, and so on, have been offering money for the volunteers from other regions to come to their region and sign the contract with them and get a single time payment at the signing of this contract. This practice quickly spread throughout all of the regions and now majority of regions have these signing bonus. And this signing bonus has been increasing exponentially. It has been growing, as you can see, this red line is moving average uh, in between these uh, states that are providing this uh, initial bonus. And it's been increasing and increasing and increasing. So if we just kind of extrapolate from that, we stop and th start thinking, if Russia is having such a great time with conscripting volunteers and they're having all of the manpower uh, that they need, remember all of these talking points of the propagandists and the Russian shills that Russia has infinite manpower, then why would the moving average for the increase in payments if there is enough volunteers increase? So basically, this 
chart is telling us that, oh, Russia is not really having a great time hiring a lot of people as volunteers. It doesn't mean that it's running out of mobilization potential. It doesn't mean that it's running out of manpower at all. Well, it is, but uh, not, not fully. There are still manpower that can be mobilized, like forcefully mobilized, but it does underline that there are issues with the Russian uh, machine. And there are some certain good news. For example, uh, in the Pokrov's direction, the reports are... So Pokrov's direction, just so you know, it's this main direction of attack where Russians are continuously advancing and uh, moving forward. I explained in the last time specifically why this advance uh, is, is quite dangerous. So today we got a bit of good news saying that they had additional ammunition, uh, web, additional uh, artillery weapons supplied. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But generally speaking, again, Ukraine still cannot fully stop Russian advances. And we're going to follow this through, but just not in this video. Talking about important politics. Now, this channel is called Ukraine Matters. And Ukraine matters because I'm a European. I like democracy. I want democracy to prevail. I don't want dictatorship in the world. You guys know that, but maybe some of you don't. Right now in Venezuela, there were, I don't know why people still call it elections, because obviously it was a fraud, like there has been many, many, many uh, videos uh, and doc topics about it. Uh, Venezuela is, is, is in a big problems right now. There is a fight f against the dictatorship of Maduro. I fully support that. I think that uh, it should the protesters should be helped. And um, the recent news are that they captured the airfield. Some of the captured the military base. We'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, we don't know what the protesters are still standing for, but anything that challenges dictatorial power is good, not because it always will lead to the another democracy, but it opens a window of possibilities where democracies can rise up. And if we're talking about democracies rise up, we must talk about the Harris campaign. Now, a lot of uh, Trump supporters have been uh, writing me angry comments saying that obviously I still don't understand US politics and I should shut up. Uh, obviously, as being pro-democracy and pro-freedom, they want my opinion to be completely squished and I should not voice it. That's true uh, because freedom of speech, right? Uh, but uh, Harris, uh, I was right. Harris entering the race has boosted the uh, Democratic base. There has been a lot of enthusiasm for the uh, for the candidate and the polls have been reflecting it as well as the money flow to the Democratic Party. So I'm very happy for that, that there has been a major, major upbringing for the democracy uh, in U.S. that we will not see uh, MAGA Republicans prevail. I really hope the Republicans will go to that more proper pro-democracy party that they were before there. You couldn't agree with some of their policies. You, you maybe like couldn't agree with some of their tactics. I understand it's political game. That's what it is. But at least they didn't want to destroy democracy and dissolve our Western alliances, which obviously Trump stands for. And I don't care about uh, Trump um, pundits in, in the comments section. Some people were writing me, Georgie, but you're alienating part of your audience. I don't give a shit. Like this, like a number of subscribers for me or number of views of video is just a number on the internet. It doesn't matter. What matters for me is delivering the right message and delivering the right understanding. If people are being essentially in the same boat as I'm not racist, but if the same people are just like, well, I truly support Ukraine, but when it met, I, I truly support Ukraine and democracy, but when it actually matters, then they can proceed to doing the most undemocratic thing ever that's literally sabotaging democracy both in the US and the world, then they're lying not only to me and trying to gaslight me, but they're lying to themselves. One of the main important thing that I want to deliver on this channel is that democracy matters and Ukraine matters because it matters for democracy. We need to understand that if we're just being gaslighted, if people are just lying to themselves and to me, that is doing maybe sometimes right thing for the wrong reasons, but not understanding the core points of 
why democracy is important and where democracy is being threatened. And it is crucial on this channel, despite what kind of view count I get. If I get one view count, two view counts, I will do the same. I truly believe in democracy. I truly believe that the only way that we can save democracy right now in US is to vote Kamala Harris for president in this election. And U.S. is, is this is important, this is why I also do this channel, is that U.S. has been analyzing how they are prepared, for example, to the war against this Russia-backed um, military alliance. For example, if there is a war with China, Russia, Iran, and so on, and there was an actual commission doing the analysis of how well uh, U.S. is prepared, because we think that U.S. is so prepared. No, we're not. The commission came out and said that when it comes to U.S. defense industrial base, the report does not mince words and says, today the United States has a defense industrial base with too few people, too few companies, declining and unstable financial support and insufficient production capacity to meet the needs of the joint forces in both peacetime and wartime. That is a damning opinion. That is is basically stating that if we don't get our shit together, if we do not stop advancing advancements of autocrats, if we do not support Ukraine to make sure that we put autocrats that challenge the world order of democracies in their place right now with Russia, and instead we try to play in these games that Joe Biden has been playing and Jack Sullivan with has playing with Russia, where they try to like, hey, Putin, just give up. We're okay to preserving your regime if you just uh, go away with Ukraine. No, they are actively challenging us. They are actively testing whether or not we are ready if we are being tested. And we did, thankfully, because democracies are doing the internal uh, audits. We did our internal audits, and the results are we are lacking. I hope this gets you motivated. Vote blue. Trust in Ukrainian armed forces. Hooray for F-16s. I love you. Slava Ukraini. And I'll see you next time.